are looking at the papers, we are looking at current affairs. But even as we commence today, I'd like to start by asking you how you're doing. All right, how are you feeling? Are you safe? Owing to the floods that are now raging havoc on all of you, of course, across the country. I get your feedback on this. Floods are destroying property. We are losing lives. In fact, some of the headlines is reading floods a nightmare. But among all these things, we are looking at the economy, at the heartbeat of it all. The question is, how do these floods affect the economy? So today on Sokoni, we have the voice uh, of the economists, the experts around this particular subject. But we also want to ask this one question. How does the money translate to your pockets? How much do you earn on average? And an average Kenyan really, how much does an average Kenyan need to make sure their families are running and that their lives are smoothly running? Be part of the conversation because it's about to get hot this morning as much as it's cold out there. So don't miss the hashtag is Sokoni, this is KTN News and this is The Morning Prime. My name is Anki Doi Sombat. You can find us at KTN News across all the social media platforms and you can find me at Doris Anki on X. Anki Doris Ambat on Facebook. Let's start with the paper review this morning, our own production right here at Standard Media, uh, and that is the standard. All right. Now, on the standard, court says no to sugar imports because it matters uh, economy right at the top of the paper on the national page six. Africa internet connection still far below potential on the business page 31. Resign or we charge you, USK, that of course is... Um, what we're seeing right now and what I'm reading so far is, of course, one of those uh, old papers. Let's just look at the main uh, paper. And as you can see on your screen, jobs, what jobs? Jobs, what jobs? In fact, the confusion coming in for Kenyans right now is there's a conversation around jobs, but what jobs? First Japanese used car auction opens its doors on the national page six and five star gunners rain goals. Jobs, soaring joblessness, is that what you agree with? And as far as employment is concerned, Kenya is witnessing increasing levels of unemployment coupled with mass layoffs by distressed farms and reduced earnings for those retaining jobs. According to a new report, which blames high taxation, soaring interest rates, unpredictable policies and government's failure to settle bills owed to suppliers. I, one of the suppliers this morning talked to us and of course that is covered in pages two and three. And in a nutshell, 4.5% is Kenya's total employment growth rate in 2022, down from 5.3% in 2021. 3.7% in the formal sector employment growth rate in 2022, down from a high of 5.9% the previous year. And 35% is the percentage of unemployed Kenyans, according to government data. So, uh, 794 billion shillings is the pending bills owed to the private sector by the government, hurting liquidity and dampening jobs. Well, of course, uh, we're looking at a 71.8% percentage to GDP of Kenya's growth uh, public debt, which rose to 10 shillings, uh, 10 point, uh, of course, 24 trillion shillings as of June 2023 from 6.7 trillion shillings in 2022. We'll have the panelists give their comments on this particular front page in detail. But right below CBC to have only one exam at grade 12, the Kenya National Examinations Council, NEC, clarifies that grade three, six, and nine will only assess learners' progress and achievements in previous grades. More of that on page three. AG has the last laugh in teeth with Public Service Commission on page four. Still on the front page of the Standard this morning, members of parliament ignore proposals of Raila Ruto Talks team. And the House team has defied the decision of the National Dialogue Committee to pass IEBC Amendment Bill 2024 without any alterations, instead proposing key changes in the electoral legislation. More of that on page four. Now, the main story coming in, and as far as the conversation around weather is concerned, is the picture on the front page of the Standard this morning. That's massive losses as floods cause Havoc. In that image, there's a resident of Nairobi's Mathari area salvaging their belongings after a night of flooding caused by heavy rains. And the meteorological department has warned Kenyans countrywide to brace for more floods. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's just the front page of the Standard this morning. Let's take a look at the front page of the Daily Nation this morning and let's see if then there are similar headlines. But of course, vividly, Flood's Nightmare taking it to the front page of the Daily Nation as the main picture of the day. And uh, it's uh, about rescue teams now evacuating residents from their submerged homes. In that image is at uh, Graceland Estate in Athi River, Machakos County, yesterday after heavy rains on Tuesday night. The flood nightmare, it's now referred to as nature's fury. And this has also caused businesses to suffer losses and disrupted roads and rail transport. One thing we want to know from you this morning is what exactly is it like on the ground in your respective counties? But right below that, more details given in this regard. Deaths. So far, more than 10 people have lost their lives in the last three days following heavy rains in Nairobi and its surrounding. And as far as destruction is concerned, raging waters have swept away bridges and destroyed people's homes and property while marooning the entire estate. And on response, the President Ruto directs formation of a multi-agency team as Azimio Chief Odinga once floods declared a national disaster all right that is uh, put on the front page of the daily nation but also above that headline is a developing story especially on matters the war on graft and um, graft probe is still ongoing and former finance cabinet secretary Okuri Atani, with his image right at uh, of course adjusting to that headline uh, he's questioned over the loss of 8.2 billion shillings and um, he's also uh, in the same light of Master Beat Governor Mahmoud Ali, who they spent six hours yesterday at the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission offices in Nairobi and Isiolo counties, respectively, over alleged embezzlement of 8.2 billion shillings. You'll see more of that a story developing on page six of the Daily Nation. All right, uh, but as we conclude the front page of the Daily Nation, right below that in um, page 10 on the back page and page 21, you'll find other stories, especially on matters, international development, health, and the fertilizer scandal. But let's take a look at the Business Daily this morning. All right, now on the Business Daily, which will be a great focus for us as we discuss current affairs on Sokoni this morning, is the debt beats development recurrent spend combined. Kenyans are asking if the economy of the country is moving towards the right direction or the wrong direction. But how can we even explain and analyze this further? The experts have already made their way in studio. But quickly, this is the front page of the business daily. Debt beats development required spend combined. And debt service costs consume 1.24 trillion shillings in nine months. Full year debt expenditure expected to hit 1.86 trillion shillings. Kenya's debt service costs have now overtaken its combined spending on recurrent and development projects due to the heavy maturing debt, underlining the nightmare that debt expenditure has become for the country. Is the country's economy stabilizing? Are we a few steps ahead and a few more behind? At the age of this paper, very key to look at the ticker. ICT deals top agenda for U.S. tycoons in Nairobi. Remember that is at the age of the business daily. Audit reveals 1.7 trillion shillings in uncollected taxes. Move that on the economy page of four. But CMA rejects NSEB to decide term limits for its top bosses on the economy page six. Still on the business daily at the age of the paper, rise of assembled phone prices, dim digital access goals. Read more of that on page 14. In fact, be careful on the kind of gadgets you buy you know, as far as data and the privacy is concerned. Court allows KCB to auction 100 Great Wall apartments. It's also covered on the front page on uh, matters of dispute. On the page two of the Business Daily, you will get more information on the same. Now, let's also look at the front page of the Star this morning as we do the review of the dailies. Remember, it's the 25th of April. 
the year 2024 this beautiful Thursday morning. Let's take a look at the front page of the Star as well. Uh, we are seeing uh, stories developing from the corridors of justice this morning um, and quite tragic, of course. The femicide demonstrations also took part in uh, this regard. But this story now has taken it to the front page of the Star. That is the story of the late Waini. We are at advanced stages of nabbing Waini hacks of um, killer, says DCI. That is coming to your screens shortly. And that story, quite sensitive right now even for the families of the late uh, wine this at this point but we have statements recorded and that has been put in more details on page three of the star on the main story high drama supporters attempt to block arrest of ex treasury cs and marsabit governor yatani in 8.2 billion shillings eacc corruption probe and monument for county staff assemblies allocation as well as other expenditures more of that is covered on pages four to five a very key story as well this morning in as much as economists and experts warn against this loss of resources misappropriated resources and how then the eacc and other institutions watchdog institutions could follow closely through the corridors of justice to number one have people apprehended, investigated, and if possible, have these resources uh, called or recalled back or gotten back into the country coffers. Now, 12 dead as nature unleashes its fury, incompetence haunts Kenyans. Interesting vocabulary used and wordings in front of the uh, stories on the star. And uh, 12 dead as nature unleashes its fury, incompetence, they put it, haunts Kenyans. Those images there are factual images, no let up. Residents of Mathare 4A in Nairobi are rescued by Red Cross personnel after their houses were flooded. That is the picture you are seeing. And on the right, a truck is stuck in a pothole after floods made roads impassable in Italy, Nairobi yesterday. Let us know. Please mark yourselves as safe in whichever platform that is there and uh, reach out to your family members as well. There are hotlines that have so far been given on social media. Make use of them for safety. Quickly, as we wrap up the star, at the bottom of the paper, members of parliament push for new jet for President William Ruto and DP regarding Shagwa on page two. And Ruto team to amend report by the National Dialogue Committee saying implement as is. Move that on page two. Professional competence, born to be a general. Lieutenant John Charles Kahariri's journey in the military. More of that on page 10. Remember, that is in line uh, with the succession of the late General uh, Ogola, of course, who was buried on Sunday. But for those who follow the news in Kiswahili, let's take a quick look at the front page of Taifa Leo. In fact, it is very interesting how this daily has put the headline this morning. It is as simple as Nikubaya. All right, let's take a look at that front page. Ni Kubaya, all right, as I mentioned earlier on, this is what they have put it on as uh, in, of course, Kiswahili. And I might not read all the details, but Ni Kubaya, and I'm believing this is in as far as the floods are concerned. Vua Kubwa, yo zaidi ya watu kumi na kuzua mateso tele katika maeneo mengi hasa Nairobi. Sawa sawa Nikubaya. And I want to pick that with the guests because um, this is Kenya. And uh, that is not a new terminology. Um, Nikubaya. All right. Even as I introduce you and they will see your faces uh, shortly. Uh, let me just start by your remarks on this <laughs> feedback and, and this uh, front page. Yeah. Nikubaya. Yeah, things are thick, yeah. They're thick. Things are thick. Mm. Um, so it's, I think it's affecting the whole region. And uh, Kenyans will need to find a way of somehow maneuvering through it uh, until the rains go down. So it's a reality which is here. We can't really run away from it. So, yeah. All right, Tuva Adams Tuva is an economist advisor and MD Adams Group. And he's saying, well, indeed, things are thick. Yeah. And when you say Kenyans, that means all of us, yeah. the, the electorate, the leaders, um, the chiefs. Because someone would say, when you say Kenyans need to find a way to maneuver, yeah. there's always a finger-pointing agenda in this country. Blame yeah. game on county government, national mm. government. So what do you mean? 
I think, okay, we'll we look at it on, on two perspectives. Yes. To some point, it's nature. You can't really battle with nature. That's one. Two, we need to have had some preparation in, in a way. Mm -hmm. So someone should have done drainages properly, uh, ensured things are well placed, make sure the roads are actually working. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a two-way... It's a two-way kind of scenario. So, yes, the rains are here with us. There's nothing we can do about it. But I believe someone somewhere should have set proper uh, strategies to make sure that even if these things come in, we're well prepared for it. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for your opening remarks. Nikubaya, let's hear from Professor Iraqi, who is an economics um, analyst. Um, as simply put, what is your analysis this morning of this front page? Good morning, my, my countrymen. Uh, I, I think let, let me start by sending my condolences to all those who, lo who lost their loved ones yes. because of nature revenging. <clears throat> if you look at one of the places that has been most affected by these floods, happen to be urban areas, happen to be Nairobi. And some people are arguing that we should not be so annoyed because the rivers are just going back home. We have built on riparian land. We have not prepared for the worst case scenario. If you talk to engineers, if you talk to any planners, they will tell you they always prepare for the worst case scenario. So there will be floods, there will be earthquakes, there will be such things. So I think this shows our level of unpreparedness. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not so much about the rain, but our level of unpreparedness. I had the weatherman one or two months ago saying there will be rains. And for, for once, they were very correct. So we should have prepared. Move for once? Up, yes, move to upper grounds and make sure that Kenyans don't lose their lives. Mm. So I think what the floods have done is to peel, our, uh, uh, to peel off our incompetence and our lack of preparedness. Because mm. if you look at some of the places that have flooded this time, even the last rain they flooded, I used to think about yesterday, and one of the places where there was a big traffic jam, a few years ago when it rained, it still had the same traffic jam because of rains. So I think we need to be more prepared for the rains, for any disaster. Not just this one, but any other. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I can conclude by quoting what happened in Taiwan recently. Right. There was an earthquake. But if you looked at the level of, the level of damage, the level of the number of people who lost their lives, they were minimal because they had always prepared for the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Let's do the same. Let's do the same, but how long does it take for us to do the same? Because I think what you're agreeing with now, Iraqi, is this particular front page of the star that says, incompetence haunts Kenyans. Tuva. Yeah. It's purely incompetence. From what we're seeing, he's actually given us his personal experience yeah. of a place he used uh, some years ago. Yeah. You used it again yesterday. Yeah. Same problem yeah. due to the rains. Yeah. Uh, as I said, yeah. okay, th th there are some first uh, world countries who are currently experiencing the same issue. We are, right. right, several. Yes. Dubai had Dubai, flood yes, China yeah. has seen it. Correct. Um, UK has given flood alerts. Correct, right. correct, yeah. So the, 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 uh, preparedness is one item. Uh, nature, however, has a way of doing things. So we can be very well prepared, yes, and uh, there's some things which I know we would have done better, right? But at some point, you need to have a balance. You see, okay, this is something which we would have worked on and gotten ready for it. And this, on the other hand, you know, if our first world uh, country has the same issue, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a give and take. So the whole blame should not uh, go on, 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 to, on to our leadership and maybe Nairobi mm. County and, and its leadership. We need to have, you know, a balance to it. Right. We would have been more prepared, yes, but nature is nature. There's some things which there's nothing we can really do. And Iraq is saying nature is simply revenging. Oh, no question about that. Okay. Uh, but, but when I come back, I know we're going to look at the economic perspective to this matter. It's not just a matter of loss of lives. We've seen a track uh, on the front page of the star, stuck somewhere. We've seen that, uh, actually saw a video, gentlemen, yesterday, yeah. because there have been videos going around, um, of a woman who seemed to have had a kiosk, and she was carrying um, what she could, that is some, um, you know, uh, cages of unga. Yeah. At least she salvaged that. Um, and I'm imagining how much of that commodity was submerged in water and what those losses are. We'll come back to that. But let me hear from another very key panelist, Philip Pande. Thank you for creating time to be here. He is a youth inclusion advisor. In fact, very important for this conversation, the place of the youth in this economy. Good morning. Good morning, Doris. What would be opening remarks to what we're seeing right now? In fact, the star is saying, um, as 12 dead as nature unleashes its fury, incompetence haunts Kenyans. 
because you know as much as what we're seeing on the screen we're looking at red cross doing their best because red cross has been on the forefront over and over again when we have these disasters but this part of incompetence for kenyans is what is now ri raising eyebrows what would be your opening remarks quite unfortunate doris um and a sad uh, situation for kenyans and not just kenyans um the other day we saw you know, terrible scenes in Dubai and mm. across, you know, even major capitals uh, in the world. It's, I, I would not say that it's an incompetence issue per se in, in the Kenyan economic system or our response to disaster. But I would say that, you know, uh, climate change is real. The more we don't want to talk about it, the more it affects us. We've seen the, the lakes like, uh, you know, Lake Baringo pushing back. We've seen Lake Victoria pushing back in, in the recent days. It is fundamental that in the wake of uh, such disasters, especially floods, mm -hmm. Kenya as a country has to think on, you know, the posterity and a way to deal with this in totality. How are we planning our urban areas? How are the county governments responding in local land use, uh, uh, for example? And uh, for posterity, how are we as a nation able to bank on our populations, bank on our cities, yes. bank on our settlements without risking more of these lives? You've seen you know, the lower side of, of Nairobi uh, towards uh, Siokumau mm -hmm. joining Machakos County. It's terrible. Homeowners, uh, young Kenyans, and middle-income earners who recently bought, you know, housing units in that area, um, are, are counting losses because they they are submerged to the roof. How then are we able to fundamentally plan our urban areas to ensure that these populations do not suffer? And it's not just about loss of lives. Okay. It's about tremendous economic losses mm -hmm. because if you're serving a mortgage for example that you recently sunk into a housing unit or a new home and and that is currently submerged it's it's gone with the home it's gone with the uh, you know the household it's gone with everything that you've yes. probably invested your entire life into so um i think we we need to look at those in in totality and um i, I saw um you know, comments of people trying to, you know, make this a Nairobi affair. It's not a Nairobi affair. It's a global phenomenon. It's a Kenyan phenomenon. It's affecting areas such as Garissa, con uh, disconnecting roads, and, mm -hmm. and that means cutting off economic supplies and many other uh, items. I, I want to speak on that, and uh, we want to take the stories, but let me hear from Iraqi and Tuva as well, because I, I think... Um, uh, Pande has touched a bit on it and saying some are making it a Nairobi thing. But essentially, why is a city so important, all right, to a, a country? Because we have cities, but we have a capital city. Looking at the front page of the People Daily, they have actually put it, city in the flood. So they have chosen <laughs> to have Nairobi as the main focus on the front page. In fact, if I read further, uh, they're saying six people dead, thousands marooned in their houses and roads impassable as nature turns angry. But they picked on the city. If I don't read too much, um, Iraqi, why is it such a big deal when a city is covered in the floods? I think they are right because Nairobi sets the powers of the country. So whatever is happening in Nairobi, politically, economically, reverberates over the country. And it so happens that almost everybody in this country has a relative in the city. Uh -huh. So, like, I can assure you, when these reports of floods started going through the media, people called me, are you safe? Have you been marooned? So, everybody is connecting Nairobi in a, in a way. And that's why there's a lot of national concern that uh, the city can flood. What about other places where the government has no seat, where people have invested less? But I think that is the reason why Nairobi is very popular is because of the economic part of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of money, a lot of wealth is in this city. So when there are floods, the, the effect in Nairobi is bigger than other parts of the world or other parts of the country. Because if you look at the rural part of the country, when you hear that uh, there has been floods, they'll probably say a lot of cows and say this war was swept away. By Nairobi, it is people. 
And in my opinion, although my colleagues are disputing that it's not a question of incompetence, mm -hmm. if you go to places where people are being carried by the rivers, it is on the river banks, which from the first of which we should never have been settled. And if you, if you, you don't need to be a city planner or an engineer to see this place should not have been settled. We should not have built houses there. Is it a matter of sensitization? Maybe they really don't. No, no. We, Maybe I, they really I, don't think, I think the regulators mm. allow that to happen. If you go to any county plan, any government plan, there is a specific place that is labeled as riparian land. And it should not be settled. But because it is dry, it is open, people come and build. Now we are saying the rivers are taking their revenge. So I, I still insist that when we are planning, we should look at the worst case scenario and keep the laws and regulations in terms of planning. Mm -hmm. You know, at one point, uh, you know, just because it's a conversation, I was interested in buying land and somebody said, don't buy now, wait for the rainy season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't buy now, wait for the rainy season. And then as far as the economic aspect is concerned, our cities, do you expect that they will look any better than this? Is it a, geograph a geographical issue or is it just incompetence as food? Because the city is a significant mm. part of a country. Yeah. What would be your economic uh, perspective on city in the floods headline we've seen this morning? Okay, I think uh, I'll go back to um, what one of the panelists has said here. Yeah? I, I do feel it, go, it goes back to who do we put in charge of these places. So again, we roll back and say it's also affected uh, by our politics, mm -hmm. right? So when we get into leadership, or when, when uh, these people we elect get into leadership, who do they put in place to handle the specific issues? Realize most of the time, if not all, we start with who helped me during the campaign. So you realize the people who are actually seated in these positions where they can actually make an impact or do changes they are not the right people. So let's just start from there. So if we could come in and say, okay, fine, these are our political allies, we'll give them an area which is not sensitive or whatever. And these are people who are, can actually work based on the CV, right? Based on what they can do. That's why it should all start. Okay, so this is done. Uh, how does it actually affect our economy? Realize uh, even, even, even before these floods, things, things are actually quite, quite heavy. Uh, if you look in the papers, there are people who are actually losing their property. Right. Right. A people, lot. Yeah, people are losing their property. Yes. Uh, you are in a good, quote unquote, financial situation, uh, good enough for the bank to give you something. And all of a sudden, a hundred people are losing their homes. A hundred people is a, is, is a very big number. So the, the, there's something people need to look at at, at that particular time. So it, it is affecting uh, our Kenyans who are on the higher, higher cadre, mm. and also the Mamamboga, who's actually saving their hunger. So it's affecting every single person, right? So I do believe it's one, the po a political, uh, political issue mm -hmm. could we put in place, because at uh, you know, those years back, when these people are actually saying, okay, fine, you can now come and build here, knowing very well that it's, 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 it's this way, the, the river. So people need to look back, maybe take a pause, right? Figure out how do we correct this, as painful as it can be. How do we go back and correct these issues? So to me, that is where we need to sit down and, and actually figure out. So we need to go back to the table, to the drawing board, and how can we correct this? There's something you said, as painful as it can be. I'm not sure how many Kenyans are ready for that, um, a painful <laughs> part of it. But let's give you a bit of uh, the recap of the stories that made headlines and give you more details uh, on this matter. Remember, it's Sokoni, so don't lose track on the economic factor this morning. But keep sending in your feedback as well, because we'll be indulging this guest to the reality, you know, the talk on the ground. Taifa Leo, Iliandika Nikubaya. So we're going to be speaking whichever language we ought to speak for the common Mananchi to understand. How much do you earn, how much does this translate to, and how can you live um, relatively um, normal life as a Kenyan? But we begin with some sad statistics. At least five people, as at yesterday, have been reported dead in the capital city, Nairobi, following heavy rainfall that continues to pound several parts of Nairobi. Over 60,000 people have been displaced with, of course, rescue efforts ongoing in Mathare informal settlement. As KTN's Emmanuel To reports, rescuers have been forced to use boats to access those stranded in the flooded areas. Let's take a look. In Nairobi, when it rains, it pours. The heavy rains have overwhelmed the city's drainage system, leaving a trail of destruction and deaths. According to the Nairobi County government, 
at least three people have lost their lives due to the devastating floods. There's a young man who was found in Kiamaiko, he was swept away from uh, the Utali site um, while they were rescuing actually others. And uh, we found him this morning. Um, there's a gentleman on a bike uh, who even have the video of him being swept away. He was on a motorbike. Um, that is in the uh, Clay City, Mwiki Bridge. And when he stepped outside his bike, he was actually carried away by the raging waters. The waters are raging. And that's why we're telling our people, don't dare. Videos posted on social media show a city marooned and submerged in floods. However, the county sheriff has attributed the crisis to bursting riverbanks. And so the drainage is, you know, is, is flowing, but the capacity of the drainage is what is uh, constrained. What we're dealing with currently, the crisis now, is bursting of river banks. Although the 17 constituencies in Nairobi have been affected by the floods, some were hit severely. In Madaris Lam, for instance, some residents were forced to seek refuge on rooftops with several casualties reported. Some of the survivors were dumbfounded, perhaps reeling from the shock of what they went through. <laughs> Katika madare, ile statistics or information niko nayo is that kuna watu zaidi ya elfu tano miambili in terms of household. Iyo ukipiga na household ya watu kama tano, you're talking about close to about 25,000 people wale wamekua affected. They should put aside those good papers and come and be with us first of all. We want to see their faces. We want to see how much a deputy president empathizes with us. Just the fact that he knows that we are in problem. We are not asking for much. At some point, rescuers in Madare were forced to use boats to save lives as women and children were left stranded. <laughs> in the capital motorists were forced to find alternative routes after two huge trees fell blocking the busy moy avenue road county officials have been working throughout the day to clear the debris this has movement between thika and nairobi was completely cut off at some point some kilometers away in athi river machakos county upscale estates like the safari Sako estate was submerged with two deaths reported uh, actually the water was in between like half above my, 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 my knees, sorry. Public and police-led rescue operations have been ongoing with some people are lifted to safety. The county has now called on the residents to move to safer places with the devolved units putting up rescue centers in schools and churches in the affected areas. The county has outlined a raft of measures to mitigate future floods, including construction in riparian zones. Said we have halted all processes of development approvals for now until we can review all of those that have been issued and where they are. Because we shall not allow um, any development upstream to affect lives downstream. Meanwhile, the Kenya Railways has resumed operations for commuter trains serving Lukenya, Siokimawa and Mbakasi village routes. The operations were suspended in the morning following the heavy rainfall pounding the areas. Emmanuel Tor, KT News, Nairobi. As at uh, yesterday, current uh, situation in Nairobi, and uh, just focusing on the headline that road sit in the flood. So we saw the live pictures and real pictures in Nairobi. What caught my attention is the crying gentleman. And he, he was crying losses, right? Uh, let me hear from Pande. That was very, you know, emotional to watch. But that is exactly what's on the ground. It is, um, I would say that... Um I come from a county that is so friendly to floods, and um, <laughs> I've been at the center of uh, disaster response as a young person volunteering to support communities. It is unfortunate that this is catching up with Nairobi, and uh, like the governor is saying, it's not a situation of drainage. Drainage could be one of the things, but it's also an issue of settlement and rivers busting their banks. But, but the Kenyans would ask you typically this yes. morning, mm -hmm. when you talk about an issue of settlement, mm -hmm. um, everyone moves, you know, we, we study this in, I think, geography, the rural to urban migration, to, to hustle. In fact, yes. you call this a, a country of hustlers. And the Kenyan watching this morning is saying, if it's an issue of settlement, where are they expected to settle in, in Nairobi? The, the government has been talking about housing programs.
Kenyans feel like they don't have any other option if they're Mathare, Kibra, Huruma, Nkuru and Jenga. Is this a settlement you're talking about? Yes. Um, there, there, there is never going to be any city in the world without informal settlements. There is never going to be a Porsche estate wherever without adjacent, you know, um, informal settlements catching up to provide labor, to provide mm. services to, you know, the high-end market. And so it's expected that as Nairobi grows, whether government provides sufficient housing for the middle class, there's going to be the urban poor that would still be at the periphery of, you know, the immediate um, settlement. And, and that's just how it happens. So you'll, you'll see more of Madare, you'll see more of Kibra, you'll see more of Kangemi, all adjacent to, you know, um, high-end living areas like, uh, you know, Lovington, uh, supporting uh, uh, Kitusuri and, and, uh, and, 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 and the likes. What we are saying mm. is we are now aware of the magnitude of floods that we are dealing with today. What can we do in this situation to respond to emergencies, to limit suffering and emotions such as the ones that uh, are expressed by the gentleman crying on TV? Mm. And it's not just him. There are many other families. Um, uh, the Madare, uh, you, you know, MPs quoting about 5,200 households, you know, the magnitude of suffering is, is huge, is humongous. What has to be done immediately is mm -hmm. you're not going to get rid of Madare, but as we still live with Madare within Nairobi, how are we able to pave ways? Mm -hmm. How are we able to, as we are talking about non-motorized transport and ensuring that people can move within those settlements, how are we able to dredge the rivers, uh, the Nairobi River, the Athi River, so that we are not talking about the risk of the river busting its banks, but the possibility of flow out of the settlements into, you know, uh, the, the pathways it should go. Mm -hmm. um, there is the question on uh, settlement um, on, on, the, on the upstream that is affecting, you know, downstream flow. It's not yes. actually upstream. It's wherever you settle today, is it a riparian land? Mm -hmm. And Professor here was mentioning, uh, how did we allow individuals to settle so close to the rivers? So much so that today as we experience floods, we are not able to basically account for people settling on the riparian areas. So riparian areas are one thing, but uh, do we have, for example, in Nairobi, a master plan? Do we have a local land use plan for the next 15, 20, 30 years that will tell that, for example, along Nairobi River, along Athi River, we've let um, the distance, the recommended uh, gap between the river and, and human settlement to allow any outflows, mm -hmm. any overflows to ensure that citizens or human settlements are not much devastated in a situation of flood such as the one that we have today. You know, you talked about limiting the suffering and uh, you followed the story as we take other stories that um, the county government has um, put up rescue centers, which is important. When you tell people to move, they ask where to. But schools identified as one of those and we are looking at schools reopening very soon. The yeah. floods or the rain will be going for as long until June, according to the meteorological department. So how sustainable are our response, um, you know, uh, strategies and schools economically to even look at that? I don't know what you think, but is it really the best option at this point in time to have schools as some of the rescue centers or do we plan on moving these people again if the floods persist? Um, uh, two things. Uh, I think for starters, we need to think long term. I think we, we, we're playing around with people's lives because this is not the first time this is happening. So first thing they, they, they really did and was really had a big impact was devolution. Let's move people from the city, let them do their own business, whatever they're doing. Step number one, good thing. So allow other areas of this country to grow so that not everyone comes to the city and everyone wants to stay within a, 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 a driving distance of, 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 of the capital. That was the first thing they did. So 
coming back to Nairobi again, we need to do projects like the Tattoo City. You know, we need to also make sure not everyone is crowding into the area. And the only way they're going to do this, the only way to make this happen is to make sure that infrastructure is well done, cheap, allow people to move around cheaply. So do we then think about trains? Do we think about maybe community buses, such kind of such kind of thinking? So it's not about today and tomorrow. It's about the 15, 20, 30 years from now. Because trust you me, in five years, in 10 years, we're going to see the same things happening again. So how do we then prepare? So do we look at uh, the, the, the current plan? Do we need to redo it? Do we need to expand our, 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 our reach? That's what we need to think about mm. right now. Because trust you me, in the next few years, we'll see the same thing. Did you see a, a, a is, crying is, person? Is it being pessimistic? Yeah, we, I, 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 I'm, I'm being, I'm being honest about it. in the next few years, we'll see the we same thing? We'll see the same thing if we yeah. don't plan for it well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so we need to put... Pro and, 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 and I said, I know this thing sometimes might affect us politically. You, we, don't, we don't want to look so unpopular. But if I was to take leadership, the first thing someone should do is remove those people from, you know, repairing. That's the first thing you need to do. Right? I know it's 5,000 people, I know it's, it's a big number, but are you thinking about the, the same lives? In, at the end of it, whatever you're doing is for them, right? You don't want the same families to suffer in the next few years. So it's someone to sit down, take it seriously, right? Tell them, okay, fine, this is going to be painful, but we need you guys to move here. It will take us two years, it will take us three years, so that we don't lose another Kenyan life. So, long term, we need to, that's, that, that's basically how you need to think. Long term, and, and I know Iraqi, you spoke of that, a clip going around. In fact, it was after media highlighted that there was uh, crazy floods in Tanzania. One of I don't know how how current that uh, clip is, but he said, if you build on the land that belongs to water, I'm directly translating, <laughs> and water decides to come back home then um, we're not going to move anyone or br uh, destroy anyone's building. You just deal with water as, as it comes. But I want to also hear your thoughts on the schools. I mean, what do we expect of the children? Where are they going to go if this is going to be a long-term strategy until June? Schools are opening starting uh, towards the end of the same month we are in. Uh, let, let me start by commenting uh, for, on, on what my colleague said because he has said something very important. Yes. That's actually the long-term plan because we need to disperse the city. That's, that was the essence of devolution. That we don't have everybody coming to the city. People can go and work in other counties. So maybe this flooding and people building on the Panyan land is an indicator that devolution did not work. Because those people should have left and gone to the countryside and if there are opportunities. So from now henceforth, the government should give incentives for people to go and settle in the, in the countryside. Maybe give companies incentives to go and start for industries and factories in the countryside. So that the people staying in the Riparian land or living in Riparian land can move and get opportunities there. But as for the schools, mm -hmm. I think it's a short-term solution. All right. Because one of the problems we have in this country, as we have said earlier, is we don't think about the worst-case scenario. For example, if you, if you move around, where would you get some empty building? They're not there. So the only empty spaces happen to be schools. Maybe if we had built stadiums like in other countries, as was and if you search sometimes ago, people would be going to those stadiums, but now we have not built them. So I think schools are good for the short run, okay. but in the long term, we have to build shelters so that if there's such a disaster, people have somewhere to go and stay. All right. Maybe churches can also help. Yeah, they're of they're course using churches as well. Yes. yes. But uh, if you're around me, I need to add some twist to this debate, because there are some historical perspectives. I know we're going to come to that. We're just making a few comments. Yes. All I, right. Um, I, I, can, I can see that later on, but right. I'm impressed by uh, the governor. Mm. saying that if you live downstream, if you live upstream, you must think about each other. Right. And meanwhile, let's just take this story. The heavy rains have not spared other parts of the country. Multiple counties have felt the adverse effects, including displacement of persons, submerged lands, and heavy business losses. In some counties, the floods have led to livestock deaths. And our reporter Vera Mora looks at the effect of the heavy rains and what the weatherman is anticipating. President William Ruto on his ex-platform has promised a multi-agency approach to mitigate the effects of the floods. This is after intense rainfall affecting various regions of the country, including the coast, central, western highlands, Rift Valley, southeastern lowlands, and northeastern regions. It appears that Nairobi suffered the worst floods over the last two days. According to Red Cross, at least 302 people have been rescued, 27 people have been injured, 
24 counties affected, 11,275 households displaced, 25,030 households affected, 127 roads destroyed, 264 businesses affected, while 4,824 livestock lost. A sport check at Mbaka Primary School shows that one of the evacuation centers of flats victims in Kisumu County is still receiving more people from different areas, with at least 500 people from Mbaka successfully evacuated from flats-prone areas. Local leaders calling for permanent solution. Along Thika Superhighway, transport activities were paralyzed for hours. The situation was worse at Kiambu County offices in Juja Sub County as the floods formed a sea like site, forcing all workers to remain idling along the busy highway for hours. Barely a day after one person was reported dead due to floods, Athi River burst its banks in the wee hours of the night and affected several families. Two people were reported dead. The rainfall is expected to continue over several parts of the country with 41 counties identified to receive heavy rainfall. The weatherman says between 24th and 29th of April, heavy rain is expected to be between 1 mm and 120 mm across the counties. Currently, Nairobi, Garissa, Tana River and Kisumu are feeling the effects with 1,765 and 7,802 households being affected. Beyond Kenya, Ethiopia Highlands, eastern side of Uganda are predicted to receive heavy rainfall. Vera, Mora, KTN News, Nairobi. And in the same breath, the Mtuapa Creek in Kilifi County has witnessed a rare occurrence due to the rising water level in the Indian Ocean. The water, which rose to four meters, snaked into nearby hotels, forcing clients to enjoy their holidays with their legs immersed in water. As Tobias Chanj in our reports, experts say that such a phenomenon was only witnessed during the 1997-1998 El Nino rains. This is the popular Marina Seaside restaurant located along the shores of the Mtuapa Creek. A spot check here and masks unwanted guests see water that has forced its way into the premises, including the main kitchen and made it home for two consecutive days. Kpamuka Road engineer and a regular visitor here is mesmerized by the sight of the water gushing in. He is, however, grateful that you can continue having a good time in the knee deep waters in this restaurant i've never experienced something like this i'm very happy to see that and to continue our dinner uh, by putting our feet in the water it's very nice and in my country there is not something like this actually we we don't know uh, so much tight in our country another regular visitor is justin walters and according to him this is not his first encounter with what he terms as furious water tides. In his own words, these are super spring tides with the moon always playing a big factor. It does not last for long but may cause problems, he adds. We have a very high tide which only happens a few times, you know, maybe every couple of years. And yeah, it's quite a, it's exciting but sometimes it can i don't know you know it, it's 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 good fun it's nice to walk in in the in the water while we have a couple of beers at the bar so yeah cool according to the resort sales manager alice gesheru the sea level started rising a week ago and before they could comprehend the situation the sea water from the creek had already snaked into the establishment and filled the lower section <laughs> ni tukio si ya kila wakati mara nyingi maji ikikuja tunapatanga uh, wakati tuko na tide ya juu kabisa tunapatanga kama 3.9 meters and at most 4 meters a similar occurrence was last experienced during the 1997-98 el nino rains that destroyed property in the region the rise in sea level is exponential and is projected to rise by more than one meter by the end of the 21st century. A couple of days ago, Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute issued an alert over the rising water level in the Indian Ocean. 
making its way into hotels and other establishments along the beach at the coast. According to Kemfri, the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPPC 2021, sea level is rising at an average rate of about 3 millimeters per year globally. Tobias Shanji, KT News, Kilifi County. All right, thank you very much for that report from the coast. They say there are two sides of the coin. While some are mourning loved ones, some are yet but enjoying the weather time and experience of drinking beer with their legs in the water. In, we'll just look at all this analysis. But in a nutshell, as we take a very short breather, businesses are at risk. Therefore, this informs our conversation on Sukoni today. 25,030 households affected as far as Red Cross reports are concerned. 127 roads destroyed, 264 businesses affected, and 4,084 livestock lost. These numbers might change across, of course, the times of starting 6 a.m. today. But we take a very short breather. We come back with the panelists. We get deeper into the conversation of the day on current affairs economics after this break.